Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of CA Overwatch. I am one of your hosts, Spencer, and with me, as always, is Chris. Chris, how's it going? Pretty good. Had a nice weekend out at the cottage. Yeah, I'm Feeling back. Great now that you're back, now that you're yeah. back, and I don't have to solo everything. Oh, you know, you did a pretty good job. I watched it. I Not liked it. Uh, you did say the LA Gladiators picked Toronto, which wasn't true. I was a little tricky about that, but you know what? I'll let it slide. Oops. You did a lot on your plate. It is what it is. And um, yeah. Here we are. We can finally get back to the way things are meant to be. The way they're meant to be. So, game back against LA Gladiators. We didn't get the result we wanted. Three it was two. very close. Spencer, what are your initial thoughts on it? Um, obviously, we go down three to the LA Gladiators. It, man, I again, I, I don't know how to think about this game. I don't know how to think about this team. On one hand, I thought there was multiple moments where I sat back and I was like, how on earth... Did Toronto lose that fight? Like multiple times, yeah. I was like, how can a team lose that fight? And every single time it was Toronto. But on the other hand, the reason we were able to like throw those fights was because we were able to put ourselves in like an advantageous position against a really good team. And I'm like, yeah, in order to get there in the first place, we had to play well. So I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know, man. There was some good stuff. There was some bad stuff. Uh, and I actually thought when you think of like the standard meta at the very least of like what we were aware of and i know it changed a little bit as the week can progress but the double shield ash genji i actually thought we were the better team yeah you know what um i pretty much have the same thought line as you there were parts that i was happy with and there are parts i weren't happy with i think one of the issues that this team's had for a long time is adaptation and i thought there are things that this team adapted quite well to on the fly yeah uh throughout the series and then there are things that the team did not adapt to what were some what were some standout aspects for you? What were some big standout points for you on on the different maps for the game as a whole? Uh, I mean, obviously, yeah. like I think uh, like when Agility's Genji is is working, I think like it truly is like a standout oh, thing yeah. for this team. Like, uh, I think some of the maps we were able to win was sort of off of his his back, if you will. Uh, I thought he played really well, yeah. and obviously, like we saw Kareev. Um, play a couple times and while we can get into whether or not he should be playing the Baptiste instead of Roki a little bit later on in the show it became pretty clear that like he arguably oh, he almost lost his King's Row but then he also single handedly like carried us King's Row so I think Kareev had some like, yeah. truly stand up moments that sort of justify and validate why I always want him in the lineup even if on Baptiste his positioning is a little bit off sometimes and he's a little bit too aggressive like he does have that <laughs> pop off factor that not a lot of other people in this team have um, and it, it is nice to see him in. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Uh, I think that like Agility's had some highlight reel plays on Anubis. Uh, the guy had some absolute clutch moments. And I think that uh, Kriv, Kriv looked quite good. And there, I think there are times that Roki didn't look too bad either. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's so there's a lot there, but I mean, a couple of things that I noticed overall, and we said this before, is um, you know losing team fights after getting first pick. I think yeah. there's a lot of times that uh, we lost a team fight after getting one or two picks, and when we should have, by all means, gotten the win. And I will admit, like I will also say, there are times that we won after we lost two people. So, so I, you can't you can't talk about the bad without bringing up the good too here. Yeah. So I think that there there's some key moments. Do you remember any of those key moments in the tournament though, Spencer? When we got first pick and we lost the fight. Yeah, I mean this happened a couple times. I mean we can just start off, and before we get too all over the place, uh, because I think for me those big moments really happened in Kings Row, Temple of Anubis, okay. and Gibraltar. I was going to talk about Li Jing Tower Gibraltar. for me, cause, cause Gibraltar. That, Gibraltar. What are the whatever? Gibraltar. Like, Gibraltar. Wait. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's early, um, because we'll talk about that when we when we get to those maps sort of thing. But for Li Jing, yeah. like, um, okay, let's talk about Li Jing. Yeah, because that's sort of like how the map started. So the match started, and I think it was a big reason why we sort of lost this match as a whole was just our inability to like play that Junkrat composition, and I, and I don't know if. Because we had first map pick, I believe, because we were the higher seed. So I don't know if Toronto Defiant thought we were like big braining this by like going to Li Zhang and running a Junkrat strategy when they were expecting like a standard Genji. But man, like LA Gladiators just brought out that Junkrat strat and like absolutely wrecked us with it. You know what I mean? Like it was one of those things where like I think Agilities was a big reason why we were able to win this or do as well as we did. He was a big reason why we were able to get top four in the summer showdown. But like, my God, was he completely outplayed on the junk rap for Mir? Like Mir just absolutely yeah. ate his lunch 
And so, so I have some I have some theories on why. Yeah. So obviously, like I, we want to break down why did they play so much better because we know that both players are good good players, and we know that Bird Ring didn't stand out particularly when he wasn't on Junkrat. Like he did play well, but he wasn't so, like slappiest so- like he did in these control maps. So for me, what does this look like? I think that the point of picking junk, because we want to talk about why was junk in this comp in the first place. I think the point of making, picking junk is that right now he has really good shield bash and a double barrier. They want to break shields yeah, as fast as possible. Especially with Sim. But the reason why, in my opinion, LA Gladiators did so good was because they knew how to work around the shields with their junk rat and just ignore them and get picks on the back line when we were trying to work down the shields. Yeah. Uh, and and you notice the style of play throughout their whole, uh, the whole series where they were very, very widespread, very flanky, and it had a biggest impact on Lijain Tower. And I noticed that we, we were able to adapt to it pretty well, but at least for Li Zhang, it looked like they're be- beating us so well because the Junkrat, our, our Junkrat agility was focusing on breaking those barriers and building that team fight potential. While uh, I think Mir in uh, Li Zhang Tower was literally just flanking, getting backline picks, and then they rolled over us. Well, yeah, because I, and I, I kind of agree too, because he must have been shooting shields because Mir was legitimately doubling agility's yes. alt percentage, right? Like it was insane. Yeah. Like, I think there was, um, and this happened in Li Zhang, and it also happened at the very end uh, on Nepal, I believe, where Mir was able to get off two tires and agility didn't even use one. Now, Agility's had his tire. He just didn't use it, but still. Like, I mean, for us to lose yeah. an entire map, and, like, obviously, tire is such a large part of Junkrat's kit. To not be able to get one off in the entire call is, like, super detrimental to your team. Right? Like, you're not going to be able to win matches where one team's getting two tires and you're getting none. Um, yeah. It's super unfortunate. So, yeah, I totally agree. Shooting shields and, and mirrors just his mechanics and on the movement aspects of Junkrat yeah. were so impressive. And he really was. And then by him being so, like... But causing so much space, I think being so distracting, yeah. it allowed Bird Ring to just sit there and farm up on on Sim and like get charged up. And then once you have a Sim that's charged up and people are looking at the jump rat, junk rat, like she can just roll through a double barrier comp, right? She burns shields. She can burn down individual people. Like you really need to check the Sim. And I think that yeah. junk rat really opened that up. So I think that, yeah, I don't know if this was like, a, we thought we had the the advantage in the junk rat composition. That's why we picked Li Zhang, but... I would have liked to have seen us go for more maps that are more Genji centric, but I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know yeah. what the whole theory was behind that. If it just caught, we thought we'd catch him off guard and we didn't, they caught us off guard. Also, Mira's tires to the teleporter were like way cleaner. His okay. tires as a as a whole were way cleaner. Um, even when you did see Agility's tires, I believe like he used two on both Koth maps and it got like killed instantly. Uh, for sure on Li Zhang, he used one and it got blown yeah. up like as soon as he used it. And Mira was consistently getting two, three, four, and at the end five picks. Um, so that was another thing that, again, it was like a strategy issue. It just, it became yes. very clear. What I'm trying to say is it became very clear that they were significantly better on this junk rat mirror matchup than we were. And I think this goes into like a bit of a deeper issue with this team moving to like next season on like, if we're going to keep agilities, which we can get into like on another episode, and I think we should, but that's fine. But we definitely need yeah. somebody else to help like round out his hero pool, right? Really good at Genji, yeah. really good at Doomfist, really good Farah. Maybe get somebody else there, you know, to play like the May or the or the you know the junk rat or the hot like whatever projectile uh, might be in then yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like I don't know what Zick's junk rat's like and with him on ping and obviously you don't want to take him in and out too much, but maybe. Maybe Zick's the answer. Maybe we should have seen Zick in the first map, but Maybe. Um another thing that I think enabled uh LA Gladiators to win on Li Zhang was uh their Arisa polls. I think their Arisa our halts, sorry, their Arisa halts were, I think, a lot more effective uh, than our Arisa halts. Yeah. And it just, and when you have like, when you're a junk rat and you're pointing your grenades and mines right into an Arisa halt, uh, like a fibrous Arisa halt, like that's another reason why you can build alt charge so fast. Yeah. So I think that was definitely a big enabler of at least like alt charge and damage as well. And that's been an issue for us all year long, right? Our ability to like channel our halts into like being combos, whether it be halt blizzard, halt accretion rock, halt flux, halt, you know, junk rat mines. Yeah. This is definitely something we have to work on. Uh, I actually thought Numlock played pretty well. So I do think he had some pretty good too. halts uh, later on in the series. And we can, I mean, we could transition now to King's Row because he had a really good one on King's Row attack where he was able to yeah. pull them off high ground. Even King's Row defense, they were trying to take the typical high ground and jump over the theater and he was able to pull them off. Uh, happened on Gibraltar too, and, and and Temple of Anubis like multiple times 
he was able to use his halts very effectively to take the enemy team off of their like defending position. It just seemed like he was less able to coordinate that with like other abilities in the game to combo with. But yeah. now that we're talking Dude. about King's Row, uh, like, let's just jump into that. Um, sorry, what were you going to say? I cut you off there. No, never mind. Uh, that's that's all in the past. King's Row. We're talking about King's Row now. So, you know, I once again there there are things that I thought was really good and things I thought weren't weren't doing as well. Like I thought one of the things I really liked about uh, the Throne team was seeing them adapt to this very diverse, very di- sorry, very disperse play style of LA Gladiators. Yeah. Where you literally have like their Rissa would be on her own. They'd have so many angles on you, but. They, they weren't even playing on first point defense of King's Row. They weren't even playing on point. They were playing all around it. And we were a very, did a very effective job at flushing them out of high ground and uh, taking care of all the different angles. So that's, that's one thing that I really, really liked about our adaptation throughout the series. One of the things that uh, I didn't like as much was their alt usage. Yeah. I think I was saying this to Spencer in the, in the uh, off air is like when we saw numlock drop a supercharger after we capped uh 66 on first point attack on king's row it seemed like a waste all to me like i know that you're doing that as almost a deterrent to yeah. stop uh leg from recontesting but it didn't like no other players had touched the point yet so i still think there would be at least a little more time to wait yeah before fully committing that you also hope that you're good enough to like even if they do recontest super staggerly right like you can just take them out there's a couple yeah, times where exactly. we were able to get first pick and like we couldn't capitalize on it. Um, I know I think it was uh, Agility's like picks Kevster on the Ash and then we just like allow them to like regroup and then we end up winning the team fight anyways. But it was only after Kevster had came or our Bird Ring had came <laughs> back and then we won the team fight. And I was like, man, we could have just won the team fight six v five, and that probably would have made it a little bit easier. I mean, it ended up working well. We got the stagger, yeah. but still. Um, I also didn't like that on the defense. We like got. Like, like they push us off point, and I don't mind giving up a tick to regroup. I thought giving up yeah. two ticks was a little much because, like, we give up two ticks, get the first pick, and then once again, they're able to, like, flip the fight. And I think had we not given up those two ticks, we probably would have been able to recontest. But because there was only one more tick they needed to get it, we had to, like, give up first point defense as a whole, which was unfortunate. And then... Then it gets, like, the most egregious, I think, moment, which is, like, I mean, good for us. So before I start knocking them again, um, they, I no. think, LA Gladiators full capped with, like, two minutes and ten seconds. And, again, I was like, oh, my God, like, we're going to get rolled by this team. Like, here we go. And then Toronto Defiant actually came back with a really good attack and was able to cap yes. with, like, even more time in their bank. I think there was just another moment where Toronto, like, when this team is like not making mistakes and they're actually in the zone and they're and they're and they're rolling and the momentum's on their side, like they can like they're a really good team. Like that was a really good Kings Row attack, and you saw like a lot of things go right. And again, Agility's hitting some fantastic blades, and Numlock with some really good pul- like halts and and um, I was and, gonna say Nevix too, man. I, I thought Nevix, Nevix had some well. really good plays. Yeah, like Nevix. he had he had he had some carry plays. No, for sure. And, and Nevix is again like his communication can sometimes be off, and I think sometimes they, if he was a better communicator, the team as a whole might be a little bit more cohesive. But his mechanics are like super on point. Like he can output really good damage on Sigma. Like, he's definitely improved that as the year has progressed. I and agree. Um, so totally. yeah, so that was really impressive. But then he gets to King Row defense a second time, and we. <laughs> You know, we, we do such a good job holding them. It's final fight territory. They have absolutely no ultimates. Even Jaws and the cast as at best. Like, like, there's no way the Gladiators win this fight. And then not only that, but we actually get two or we get one pick before the fight starts. So it's not even that we're like a 6v6 and we have Trance and Blade, two extremely impactful ultimates, especially when combined together because, of, you know, the Zenyatta just like follows Genji around. And he essentially can't die or it's really hard for him to die and he can get a bunch of picks. But we actually go up 6v5 before we use either ultimate. And then we use Trance and Blade together to try to solo kill a Baptiste. And then their four runs into our four and like and flips the fight. Like I understand that we ended up winning this game. But it's mistakes like that that you just can't make, man. You know what I mean? Like, like in no way, shape, or form should you lose a 6v5 if you have a trance and a Baptiste, and if you are going to like blade solo blade the bap which is like an okay target i guess i mean i think again with that much ultimates you could just blade the whole team and trance and keep you up but like first of all he had all of his cooldowns so he's able to shift and emo field and then obviously jump which made it difficult but then two like maybe you don't have to also use the trance alongside him like i think what happened was kareev 
tranced in with agility so he didn't die, but they just focus one target. So like, yeah, you end up killing him by the end of your blade, but like using a trance and a blade to kill a bat is like not a very good trade in my opinion. I, I totally understand that. I think that uh, King's Row had some, like you said, shining points. that had some deep and dark points as well. But a Temple of Anubis. Yeah. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? For me, I think it was. It seemed like more the same of King's Row. Um. Yeah. I, I guess so. Like again, it's another moment where it was like, we, we have a really good, uh, you know, first point attack. We're able to cap it. We go to second point. We get some like like two or three picks i think on on attack and i'm like okay here we go good full cap and then sure enough somebody dies and then okay now it's like a 5v3 like we should still be then all of a sudden logics goes down it's like well great now this is you know we get one or two ticks we're not able to close it out it seems like multiple times like this team isn't really good at like we get the first pick and then we win the entire team fight uh they could very much have the fight flipped um so it goes for me being very disappointed not being able to get the full cap to all of a sudden we're about to full hold the like gladiators on first point and it comes down to they have like 15 seconds left. They got to push in. They have to use supercharger just to get through the choke, not to attack our team, just to get through the choke. And and we have our supercharger a little bit later, so the damage is like on our side. And we also have window and blade. And then agility goes up, dives into their team, instantly gets picked. And then we like lose the fight again. It was another moment where I was like, "There's no way a team can lose that." And well, then somehow had, that team lost it, and that team ended up being us. They they had a greatly placed window that we didn't kite. No, we was, didn't have window one. Window they used window there. after. Oh, they they had window. No, we had that like steal it up. They I'm almost certain. I'm almost certain. Yeah, they they built it eventually, but they'd already built it after I think agility just went down. Like we had used window and blade, and our supercharger was up, and then they were able to build it because that fight started. They and like uh, their VAP was like seventy something percent. So he did build it by like the time they won the fight, but I don't think at that moment he had had it up. They used yeah, supercharger to couple, take the space. There are a couple of really close fights there too. I mean, second point as well. I think there's one point where we pick two, and then they pick three, and oh my gosh, I thought they were going to cap it, but then we Nevix managed to clutch that out. Too. Yeah, snowball and potential too. Also. Agilities had some of the best highlight reels on Temple of Anubis. Yeah. The man got like a 5K and a, maybe even a 6K too. He he had some really oh. crazy fights or really crazy, um, really crazy uh, Genji Blades. Yeah, no, and that's what I mean by this. It, it's like on one hand, there's multiple times. And I mean, again, like we obviously throw first point D and I'm like, great. Like we just did this map way and we actually end up clutching it by full holding one second point. But it was like, it's like on one hand, I'm, I'm impressed that we did full hold them on second point. It shows like really good defense from this team. And the fact that we were almost able to full hold them on first point, really good defense from this team. But it's like, man, that, that whole second point really shouldn't have like been needed. You know what I mean? It's like, once again, this team is like making it harder on themselves. Like you played so well, you're outplaying them. Like just full hold them. You know what I mean? Like it was a big fight to win. If we had won that, uh, I mean, we win the map anyways, but we very easily could have lost the map. Like this, this match could have looked a lot differently yeah. because we made some huge mistakes, and then thankfully we were good enough to like end up winning the map anyways. So yeah, I, it's one I I just don't know what to think, man. Because you're right. Because yeah. like if you look at the Boston Uprising, they don't even get an opportunity to throw those fights in the first place, right? They just get like full held. <laughs> you know, they don't they don't first cap Kings Row with two minutes and thirty seconds anyways to even get a chance to throw the second part defense. They've already lost. Yeah. And the LA Gladiators are a good team, right? Like, yeah. I want to make it very clear. Like, we're, we're knocking them a little bit because there's some very big mistakes. But at the same time, like, this was an incredibly close matchup. A matchup where I actually think we look better on, like, the meta at the time, the double shield Ash Genji. The LA Gladiators, yeah. look at the roster. Big Goose, Shaz, Space, OGE, you know, Mirror, Kevster, Birdring. It's a really good roster. I know on Platchup, before this thing started, they were talking about teams that could potentially upset the top four, and everybody brought up the Gladiators as being, like, their pick to make some noise. So, I mean, even though we made some atrocious mistakes that, like, almost cost us it, we were able to bounce back and, and take two maps off of, like, a really good team. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Um, I, I guess we could talk about Gibraltar, but first, uh, what are your thoughts on Roki versus Kriv? Uh, yeah, um, before we get into, I guess, because I mean, we do see Kreev coming in against Gibraltar and, and whatnot, but um, I think this is well, another yeah. moment where I think that I still want to see Kareev playing. Um, yep. In my opinion, like, I don't disagree that like, we all agree that his Baptiste is one of his weaker 
heroes, especially in his flex support role. I think yeah. he can definitely be over aggressive at times. Uh, he can definitely get picked first a little bit too many times. I think sometimes he probably prioritizes damage instead of healing or, or immortality field usage uh, here and there. But he's just such a good player. And I, I think that people are like, oh, Roki's so good, Roki's so good. Like, I mean, Roki had some mistakes this time. I think his immortality usage came a little bit late. Sometimes he uses it a little bit preemptively to just keep people alive. Um, he uses his shift a lot to like, like save himself. So he's like, either he's getting picked a little bit too much, or or sometimes like it's like before the fight even starts, he gets like low and he'll like use his shift. And I'm like, you could you know just allow like uh, Cruz to like quickly heal you up or like proc inspire or something like that, or like hit, hit a health pack right, like instead of for like moments where you, you need it a little bit more because you don't have it for when the team fight actually starts. Um, and I think there's sounds moments. Like a, sounds like a little bit of a positioning slash pathing issue. Yeah, and it could he's be a, a communication thing, right? He's still like somewhat new to this roster, even though he's been on for a while. Like it's not like we've seen a ton of play time with him, so. I'm still willing to give him like somewhat of the benefit of the doubt, but like, man, when you see moments like where, oh, and, and they, yeah, it's good that I brought this up because I didn't mention this in King's Row, but we're like, like it looks like we're about to lose, right? We like absolutely botch that King's Row defense, and 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 LA Gliders have all the momentum and the alt on their side, and Kevser goes up for a blade, and it's basically again like that fight should have been won by the LA Gladiators, and that arguably that map should have been won by the LA Gladiators, but then Kareev just is just like screw it, I'm gonna carry. And just like solo, I mean, I shouldn't say solo frags. Numlock actually had a pretty good peel for him, but is able to like get the discord and hit two headshots on the Genji and, and pick him with the with like a, a melee cancel. Like, what an incredible heads up play! And I feel like Kareev is has the ability at all times to make those sort of plays. And he's one of the only players on our team that does. So it's like I, I think I would almost just take that carry potential. We've seen him do it against the Titans. We've seen him do it last year against you know other teams, and um, I like having him in the lineup even though i do think that Roki plays a little bit more passive a little more healing play style i think like kareem just has those moments where you're just like oh like that's why he's one of the best flex supports in the league yeah i totally i totally agree with that um i i just like having those uh, carry potentials from kariv once again like i still once again if somebody needs to play baptiste like kariv can carry a little bit less on baptiste because he doesn't have the kit to necessarily pop up as hard as Roki. So, I mean, there must be something going on in scrims where it's like, Roki's out playing him in scrims. Like, th that's got to be it. Maybe, I don't think, yeah. uh, I don't I don't think it's other stuff. And, like, we just got to get him to get to a point where he, because we know he has good mechanics, right? We know Roki has good mechanics. We just need to get him to a point where he can refine his uh, lamp usage and refine his pathing and positioning. Yeah, but he has good mechanics, but he's not, like, a flex support player, right? Like, he is a, a main support. He's a Lucio main, like, right? That's what we knew him last year, Lucio and Mercy. So, he's good mechanics, I think especially in relation to, like, I think he's a better Baptiste probably mechanically than Cruz, right? Like, I would agree with that. Um, I know, Cruz, you yeah. lose the shot calling and stuff like that, but, like, man, I look at the team like the San Francisco Shock. They will draw on, like, Twilight and Violet on, like, the, the Baptiste and the Brig. You know, uh, Philadelphia was running for a while Alarm on the Brigitta and... Then you would run a uh, boombox on the Baptiste. So, like, I, th I think it's another a bit of a weakness of this team is not having a second flex support to sort of take over that Baptiste role. Maybe that would have been nice if you had somebody else who could do that. Or um, I even would have liked yeah. to have seen maybe you try Kareev on the on the brig and see, how, you know, the sort of plays he can make on a hero like that. I know it's not really his strength. He's never really played it before. But, I mean, if Alarm can pick it up, you hope that Kareev potentially could as well with enough practice. I mean, I know you lose Cruz's shot calling, but that's why you have Numlock in there. To sort of help with that leadership and that shot calling, I know like Logics is a pretty good shot caller too. So yeah. I don't know, man. Like I, I think he's good, but I think he's like not a great Baptiste in the league. And even though Kareev had his moments of feeding, at least you have like the mechanical raw damage output potential that he brings to the table. So I'd still rather yeah, see Kareev yeah. in there, even though I don't think yeah, Rookie played poorly. I understand. That's a, I think that's a good um good take right there. So Gibraltar. What are your quick thoughts on that? Man, this was the, another thing that we were, we were just a little bit like less practiced on. And there was two things that really stood out to me. One, I think Genji or um, Sombra was probably the play here. So I would have really liked to have seen Surefor in. Um, and unfortunately, we, we didn't. And I, and I understand if you wanted to run the Widow, sure. I do agree that Logix is the play. But I think it became pretty clear like the last couple of weeks in APAC regions that Sombra was the play. And I think that we knew that that's why Logix played Sombra on attack. So, I mean, I know that Shurfor seems like he's kind of checked out for the year, but um, he played against Paris a few weeks ago, looked really good on the Ash and the Sombra. And, man, like, with a meta like this, I think having, like, a Sombra Genji dive with Shurfor Agilities on Kareev on the Ana, like, I think we actually could have looked really good. And, unfortunately, um, and it's not slight against Logics, his Sombra actually wasn't bad. It's just not as good as Shurfor's. And... 
I also think that OGE is just an incredible monkey, man. He's just so good. I mean, there was another thing yeah. that we just ended up losing because like they had a better composition on top of like OGE had so many clutch plays. His juggles are so yeah. on point. Even though his Arissa's not looked great at this point, uh, at some points in the year, and his, his Ryan's been inconsistent, OGE is still one of the best monkeys in the league, and you saw it uh, in, in, on Gibraltar. You really did. You really did see it on Gibraltar. Uh, yeah, so I think, I don't know, we could probably save the why is sure for not playing a whole lot right now. Uh, for another conversation at yeah. another time, but I think that's a good challenge, Belter. Nepal, final map, my thoughts. This is, like I said, this is where I mentioned this earlier, Legion Tower. Um, it's one of my kind of, unfortunately, um, big gripes with the team for this series is, you know, you lost, you got slapped with the Junkrat twice. You know, why are you running a third time? You know, why don't you switch off, try something different? I know I said this to Spencer before, and he's like, well, they just counter swap. I would have liked to see Agilities at least try the fire. Like he's already on, he's already good at that. Just give it a go. And if they counter swap, it doesn't work. Like it's better than just running the same thing and get being over and over and over again. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, I think they do just counter swap and Burian just goes like Ash or McCree and you just kind of lose. I also think that for me, a bit of the bigger issue was like, why not pick a map that doesn't work with Junkrat? And then we got a little bit unlucky because I think Nepal's Sanctum is re is probably the best of the three for Genji. And we just didn't end up getting a chance to play it because we lost Shrine, I believe. Like, sh losing Shrine killed us because Village is really, really good for the Junkrat. And we lost Shrine, so they were able to just close it on Village. And I, I knew we were going to lose Village. I was really hoping we could take Shrine. Um, a little bit unfortunate that we didn't get to see Sanctum, but I was also like, man, there's other maps that you could pick in the cough that probably like are less centered around the junk rat and, and the, like, you know what he's able to bring to the table. So, um, yeah. I don't disagree that maybe you could run far. Cause I think far is actually doable on village as well. Uh, because obviously the big thing in the middle, you can sort of just fly around and hide behind and, and, and pick your sight lines like that. But that's what uh, I'm thinking. But I, I do think they just like swap, but you're right. Like, I mean, again, like we just ran junk rat into their junk rat and Agilius once again was lost a fight without using his tire once. And I know, I know mirror hit a five K and, he used a teleporter really well and was able to hide his tires significantly better than agilities. Um, and when you get a 5k tire, like you're just going to lose that with 99%. But still, man, like maybe more proactive with the tire then. That's once again, like why is he able to get off two tires and we're getting off none consistently? Uh, it's because they're the yeah. ones engaging first. They're the ones using it to engage first. Uh, and I think tires one of those ultimates that like, especially when you have point control, you know they need to come through a certain amount of chokes. It's either the main one or it's the one up top. Set yourself up in a position to use it. Um, so yeah, I agree. I think it was a bit unlucky that we didn't get Sanctum, but at the same time, we, we were just a worse Junkrat team and they were able to steal two yep. maps off of being a better Junkrat team. And I think OGA, OGE stole the third off of just being a better monkey and, and, and playing the Sombra. So yeah. And then I know they counter swap. My, my thoughts are like, Hey, like if it gets you a point flip, that's better than what we were doing before. Like if it gets you like a team win where you go on and then like somehow you can I don't know change back, but I I don't yeah I don't fully disagree. It would have been I, again I think I I I'm purely extrapolating this. I don't necessarily think we saw their drunk rat strat coming. I think yeah. it did catch us off guard a little bit, uh, just because you're right. Like if we knew that they were just so superior in the junk rat, you think that we'd at least have a a contingency plan. I, I think that we expected them to run something differently. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they thought that they were just a better Junkrat team, but man, Agility is clearly Junkrat's not his hero, which is fine. He's a Genji guy. Okay, like I, I'm, I'm not, I wasn't really expecting that to be his hero. And yeah. one thing, like, I know there's there's gripes we had um, with the team during this series, but like, I, I also want to say that they, they did have some like good moments. They definitely had some good moments where I was like, okay, this is like an improvement versus like, a couple weeks ago or a week ago or something like that. Well, it looks a lot better than versus oh. Vancouver. Like we, we almost lost versus Vancouver, right? Like Vancouver, I was like super negative on this team. And thank God I was on vacation because I would have came on here and been even worse than I was today. Um, and I would say that we played, you know, like again, three, two, we could have easily won this three, two, right? We won one of the costs. Like the LA gliders are definitely a better team than Vancouver. So for us to go from that performance versus Vancouver, like I legitimately thought we were going to get like three out. Like I knew there was a, I knew like we shouldn't have because I knew we're, we're like a better team than that. Um, yeah. And obviously, if we, you know, goes back to if we had won 3 1, we actually wouldn't have even had to play other gladiators in the first place. We probably would have been able to pick our team and go forward. But again, that's why you can't throw maps. Um, but I definitely think it was a big improvement over our previous game versus Vancouver. Like, other gladiators are a legit team. They have such so much star power on that roster. And we were really able to go toe for toe. And I think we were able to like outplay them on the double shield 
Genji composition, which you know they they've looked good on, and um, I think had right, Sherfor right. potentially played Gibraltar, 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 Gibraltar. I caught myself. Gibraltar, like five I caught myself. Times. Um, <laughs> had he been able to play maybe Gibraltar, something might have happened, and had we potentially just stride a little bit better or picked a different map for Koth, maybe we were able to take that one too. It's a close game, man. Yeah. There's some negatives, yeah, but there's no, definitely I some positives. Yeah, I think, but I think we holistically cover everything. I think everything's I been touched on during this. Um, you know, it's been a little bit longer considering we uh, are just talking about one game. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's it. So anything else you want to say real real quick, Spencer? I was going to say we'll be back next week covering some of the stuff. We'll, once we figure out the whole playoff situation, how's that going to work? We'll, we'll break all that stuff down for you guys. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, You know, subscribe to us on YouTube, TikTok. We're doing all this fun stuff. It's all in the description below. Uh, once again, Instagram, we're putting out minute-long content pieces. So we're just talking like three keys to victory putting out some memes tiktok we're putting out memes and those one minute pieces too so if you guys like shorter stuff yep check those out and as always thank you for watching